One thing that I just really don't understand is there's so many good trailers out there that are teardrop style camp, you know, campers, or even just regular overlanding trailers that you sleep on top with a you know rooftop tent. There's so many of them that do not have any type of protection whatsoever for the body of the trailer. I'm talking rock sliders. You know, something that's gonna keep the trailer from getting clipped by that rock that you misjudge when you're going around a corner or that nasty tree that likes to hide in the bush as you're trying to sneak past something and it happens. Poor John, he experienced that with this trailer. Didn't see a log hidden in a bush and it ripped that fender right off. So that is what this video is gonna be all about. I'm gonna make a killer body protection all the way around this teardrop camper because it deserves it. We need to protect what we've got right there. So come join me and let's make some kick butt body protection for this camper. Well, I'm going to start in the back of the camper and I'm going to make my way around each side because I feel like that's just going to give me just a nice starting point to go off of. So the material that I'm using is inch and a half by 095 wall tubing and this is going to be the main rock slider. I may end up using some other materials to brace the rock slider for the fenders and whatnot. Especially I've got to come up with a system to get around the shocks on our cantilever shock system. That's going to be a little bit of fun because <laughs> I, I decided to deal with this of the rock slider versus trying to mount and design the suspension around the rock slider. i rather, this will be easier. <laughs> Either way, it'll be challenging, but this will be easier to, to work around that shock. To start this build off, I need to make some side plates that will be attaching to the side of the frame. These plates are also gonna provide a nice strong recovery point for the trailer. Also, these plates are gonna uh, give me a starting point to start running the tubing for the rock sliders. I wanted to have a receiver hitch on the back of the camper, not necessarily for towing other trailers, but more for actually hauling mountain bikes. This way, John can use a hitch bike carrier to carry his mountain bikes when he goes out camping. Doesn't that look really good? I think so. Heck yeah. And, we don't have a whole lot of bumper protruding out. Um, so from the face of the, of the frame to out here is four and a half inches. And I think that's gonna work out perfect because if you open this, if you were to, let's say I'm pretending like I'm doing something here yeah, my legs are like kind of up against it. I mean, if I stand real straight-legged, they're not, but 
I can still stand here naturally and it feels just fine. So I think I'm good to go on that. That was something that I was really concerned about because I wanted it to stick out far enough to where if John accidentally backed into something, he's not going to hit anything. He'll hit that before any of this. But I needed to make sure that it wasn't sticking out too far to where using the kitchen was gonna become very obnoxious. That, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, and I got the hitch in. So this hitch, if he needed to, he, he could tow something with it. Um, he could pull with it, but it's mainly for his mountain bikes. Now, the beauty about doing this style of bumper is you can hook your soft shackles right here and you can pull from each one of these pockets as well as you've got holes right here for steel D-rings to come down right here and you're in line with the frame. So I think that's going to work out perfect. So now I think what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to build from here to the back of the tire. I have first established the mounts going from the rock slider to the frame. This is going to allow me to mock up the rock slider tube a lot simpler. Also, me and John discussed about mounting a jerry cam on top of the rock slider on the driver's side and having the spare tire mounted on the passenger side. So I needed to make sure that the rock sliders are going to be wide enough to protect those items. Making progress. <laughs> Check that out. Now, it seems a little off and I'm still trying to tell myself that it's not off because we have to make sure that we're wide enough to cover the tire all the way, right? I don't want it this narrow because then it's kind of pointless and you know I want to cover up the majority of the tire now this suspension is going to move this way a tiny little bit because the pan hard bar is up like this so when that pan hard bar starts to travel down it will bring this tire over a little bit and it should be just about perfect for ride height and this was a little funky right here. So I decided to run a straight piece and then have this piece butt into it because there's actually, I don't know if you can actually see it, but there is about a five degree slope up to give the back end of this a little bit of, you know, clearance. And so instead of trying to do a bend and a bend which actually my bender wouldn't be able to do that I just thought it'd be easier to have this butt into here this brace will help strengthen that corner 
and I'll weld it up, buff it out. You won't even really notice it. But look how cool is, I mean, that's just looking so awesome with the rear bumper. It's all flowing together. Heck yeah. Okay, so remember how I said that there needed to be a jerry cam mount over here? Well, let me show you. So, uh, this is another reason why it looks so kind of out of proportionate. But by the time you get that, oh, come on, stay. Ha, okay. So, see, by the time you get this jerry cam mount in here, it's actually perfect. We've got enough clearance that the bottle is going to clear this stuff, that jerry can, and then it will be protected. I'll run some strap across there for this to bolt down into, and boom, that looks very proportionate. And then right here, I will, oh, there it went. <laughs> right here, I'm going to make the new tail light mounts because we've removed them off of the old frame so right here will be the new tail mounts i think this is turning out sweet so now that i've got this side tacked up i'm going to repeat the process on the other side and when i get done building the base of it then we'll start doing i'll start doing the uh, spare tire mount and i'll bring you back in when i I'm at that point, okay? All right, let's bust out the other side. I quickly put together the passenger side rock slider and now I needed to measure out for the spare tire carrier. I quickly pulled some measurements and now it was time to put something together. What do you guys think? Ta-da! <laughs> uh, I unfortunately got that a little crooked, but that's okay. I've got it just tack welded on here, just barely, uh, you know, so I can grab it and break it off because I need to get in here and paint this whole thing, especially on the back side, before I weld it down here because I won't be able to spray paint behind this once it's all the way fully welded. And then I put in my lag bolt holes. So then that way this thing will be sucked up against the side of the camper and I'll just screw some short lag bolts into the side um, of this uh, fiberglass and that'll keep this from wobbling as it goes down the road but I like it. That turned out really nice. And I am going to put a 
support piece right here uh, underneath the center of the tire but I don't want to do that until I actually um, I'm gonna cover this whole section right here with uh, some uh, 18 gauge plate uh, to act as a deflector for the tire because it'll just throw mud up real bad and so I want to have that welded in first and then I'll put something like this right in the center like that and that way it'll help hold take the weight that'll be perfect awesome well I think that is going to button up the back part of the camper of course I've got to weld everything out and now I think it is time to move on to the front section of the camper and I'll share with you guys some ideas that I've got and I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's going to work out really, really nice. So what I'm going to be doing, I've already got just kind of uh, some supports here to hold my tubing, but I'm going to use this inch and a half and it's going to come in like this. I only want it to be about three inches away from the body because if you if you open up the door and you sit right here, your legs droop over. And I don't really want this to be wide because honestly, there's no reason for it. Um, so I'm only going to be about three, four inches uh, from the inside of the tube to the body and I'm going to run that all the way like this and then I'm going to turn it and go around the propane bottle and right here I'm going to I think I'm going to flare it out just like this and that will protect the tire that'll kick any rocks or anything off to the side and then also that gives me the correct width to run up and over you know the same as back there so this piece right here I need to make it the same distance out as back there and I'm gonna have to get creative because now I got to go around the shock and still make it strong enough so it can take an impact but I've got to <laughs> make sure that there's some movement there so this is going to be a little challenging but I sat here and scratched my head for a really long time trying to just figure out what to do and I went through and I pretty much designed it all one evening in my head and got a pretty good game plan so I think the first thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to work on this side of the fender support and then we'll go up and over and then we'll move farther forward. So this is going to be awesome. Uh, it's giving the camper a pretty cool aggressive look, I think. Here, I'll, uh, I'll stand back and I'll show you guys. I mean, the welder's kind of in the way, but isn't that awesome? It's definitely giving it that off-road utilitarian style look to it. And then you've got the water jerry on that side. So awesome. All right, let's, uh, oh, time to bust out some fenders. This is gonna be fun. To make clearance for the shock, I came up with an idea to use inch and a half by three eighths thick flat strap that I'm going to bend to create a C that will go around the shock body to give it the clearance that it needs to move up and down, but also give the rock slider that strength that it needs.
moving right along. This is pretty exciting. Oh, check that out. I've got the fender, the rock slider. I did add in some, I got the supports in. We've got around the shock. <laughs> Look at that. How flipping awesome is that? So this is one inch by eighth inch wall tubing and I was trying to go with some pretty stout uh, material just that way if it takes a brunch it's not going to fold in as easy and also um, you know give it some nice strength for being able to step on and I, I thought about running another piece of tubing on the back side up against the body but with this interference and then with this interference i was just like no that's going to be too much of a pain in the butt so i came up with these i think they turned out quite nice so perfectly flat three quarter uh square tubing and i got a place where i can anchor them right into the wall just like the fenders were and yeah I'll run my plate down along here and I'll notch it out for around here. It'll come up, turn, you know, and it'll be nice. And I've got some automotive seam sealer. And if you are not familiar with what that is, uh, it is legit. Um, they use it in the manufacturing of cars and it bonds panels together where they cannot weld and it's pretty much as strong as a weld almost. And so I'm gonna use that to go along. So wherever that panel, that fender is sitting, I'm gonna use that stuff to go along to help bond it to the fiberglass. And I also use it to seal up anywhere where water can get in and cause rust to happen. So this way, it'll be perfect and now so when i go to make my fenders i like to make them to where if there was a failure with the airbags and it had to ride on the bump stops you still have room for operating the trailer you know you could air down the tire and you could tow this out um off the trail or down the highway with sitting on the bump stops and still have plenty of clearance and you're not gonna rub and burn up a tire or anything like that. So, but isn't that looking awesome? I think it is. I mean, especially when you come back here. Oh yeah. <laughs> Gosh, that's, that's turning out so awesome. Well, uh, there's just a little bit more that I need to tackle on the rock sliders or I should say the body armor. And that's right there. So instead of trying to make this piece all one, I figured it would be a lot easier to work with this section and then come in and bend a piece to go around this section. And I'll just join them right there. And I think this is turning out pretty slick. So. I'm going to mount the propane tank right here, and then on this side, I'm going to have a jerry can sit right here for fuel or extra water. I know the water one is back there, but it's nice having an additional fuel or water storage right there. But what I want to do is I want to use some one-inch tubing, and there we go. I gotta, uh, okay. So what I wanna do is with this one inch tubing, I wanna come up like this, right? And then it'll turn and then it'll go around the bottle and then it'll go back into the frame. And what I wanna do is I want to create that 
uh, with that one inch tube basically make a rock deflector. And I've got some like 20, 22 gauge, real ultra thin, um, maybe even 25 gauge uh, steel. That'll work perfect for wrapping around on that one inch tubing. And then it'll give the bottle some protection because honestly, I don't need a rock flying up and whacking a hole into the side of the bottle here or messing with the valve. So yeah, <laughs> I don't want that. And I'm gonna add that feature on the other side as well to protect the jerry can. By golly, I messed up. <laughs> uh, so let me explain myself here. All right. So it's turning out pretty good. I'm liking the shape and everything, but here's the problem. So I was trying to find, make the edge of this one inch the center of the tubing down here, okay? So then that way when the sheet metal comes down, I can weld the tab on the back side for it to bolt into, but I cannot get this out. <laughs> right now, if I try to go to pull this out, it's such a tight fit between the box and this lip right here, I cannot pull it out. So here is what has come to my mind. And, ah, okay. So if I was to cut it right here, I found this, uh, oh, come on. Sorry, it's being stubborn. I found this old piece of, uh, actually this is a uh, stainless steel muzzle loader barrel stock, their cutoffs. Um, but it fit perfectly inside this tubing. I mean, I'm talking like perfectly. So my thought is if I cut this right here and I weld this insert into it, I plug weld it in, then it'll lock this into here, right? And then I can put a piece of strap right here and then that gives me a surface where I thought the sheet metal can actually like tuck in behind the other sheet metal that comes around here. And then, oh, let's see here. And then it would just, you know, come around and I would make it so the sheet metal, you know, is bolted in going around. And then down here, I wouldn't bolt the sheet metal in. Um, I got to think about this a little bit more because it'd be nice if there was some type of something right here to keep it from, you know, moving. 
So I'm not 100% for sure what I'm going to do, but maybe I'll use that flat strap to come down here. And then down here, there could be just a simple wing nut style. Because I'm trying to make it to where John does not have to have any tools to remove this section of guard. So then that way he can just easily, he can easily fill up the tank without having to bust out any tools, just a simple, you know, by hand and the thing would go together relatively smoothly. <laughs> but, oh, this, this is exactly actually what I was fearing. I was dreading that this, I was gonna run into this. And I thought the other side was going to be hard with the gas tank. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm loving how it's turning out. And I think it's going to be so nice. And now you're wondering, well, how come I didn't bring this up higher? Well, it's because this is the guard. This is a guard. Yes, I'm sure some rocks might go through there. But the majority of it is going to be, you know, from the back tire flinging up. And this is going to be the area that it's going to get hit. So I, I I know these bottles are pretty durable, but I just I just would rather protect this. And then that way, too, if branches come in, you know, it might dent that sheet metal, but it's going to it's going to give us some protection. So. And also, <laughs> this is let me show you guys something here. So I have to worry about the door and this guy right here because <laughs> Can you get any any closer than that? Maybe just a tiny bit <laughs> Yeah so I had to keep that in mind as well. Uh, and that's because that's why the tubing is in farther right there where I would have preferred to have this actually out here. And that's what I started doing. And then I went, wait a second, John, there's a door. And uh, you know, it'd be stupid if the door just went and like bumped up against it. And then, you know, like would I have to move that onto this and I don't want to do that because then there's you know fresh holes in the body so yeah trying to work around a lot of stuff here and uh, as of right now that works the door catch holds <sighs> yep <laughs> oh my goodness Wow. I mean, it's okay. It's all part of the game. You know, I'm literally in engineering out of my head. Nobody's done this on these teardrop campers or at least have a modification. So it is what it is. But I think I'm going to have to make this section removable for John in a manner that he can easily access this. I'm, I think that's just the way that I'm going to have to go. Sometimes for me, once I fix a mistake or a problem that I have run into, the end result actually turns out to be something really, really cool. And making this section of the splash guard removable ended up actually being super cool and was one of the things that I was actually really proud of when building this front section out. Instead of having a mount for a Jerry gas can, I decided to make a wet storage area. Now, wet storage area is for things like your tire chocks, firewood, ratchet straps, anything like that, that it's okay if it gets wet from rain. And I think this side turned out quite nice. For the fenders and splash guard behind the rear tire, I went with 18 gauge material. I thought that this was the perfect thickness for deflecting rocks, but also being lightweight and not adding a whole bunch of additional weight to the camper.
I just cannot get over how awesome this looks. Look at that. Man, that looks good. <laughs> nice built-in fenders. Now, I did make these strong enough that you can stand on them to access, you know, like your roof rack or something. Um, or if you wanted to mount something on top of those, they can handle the weight. But, gosh, that looks good. It's kind of sad that that's the only thing that you can see of the suspension, but that's okay. Spare tire mount. Looks amazing. Got nice rear bumper with hitch for, you know, real light towing, mainly for mountain bikes. Come around to this side. Got your jerry can mount for water because John's going to eventually have a drop down shower. Again, nice and strong. Could use for storage. Come around to the front. Oh yeah. So instead of mounting a, another jerry can right here, um, we talked about just having this as wet storage. So John could throw pieces of wood, tire chocks, that kind of stuff can all be right here. Now, there is some tin that is gonna go on the face of these. So then that way, mud and rocks and stuff will be deflected. And I'm gonna use self-tapping screws to put that tin on because if the tin gets really beat up, I wanted to make it removable so then that way you can just put new material on down the road. And then, last but not least, the propane area. This turned out so awesome. So, this right here, this is the only nut or bolt or whatever, but this is the only thing that you have to remove in order to access that propane tank. It's a little long-winded bolt, but that's okay. Come on. <laughs> oh, oh, darn it. Oh, that's okay. And then you'll be able to grab, remove it, be able to pull the propane tank in and out. Put it back in. Boom, done. And I did put a tab back here, so then that way, like, you know, if something hits that, it's got some strength down here. Grab handle on this side. Oh, and I just realized I gotta put a grab handle over on that side. <laughs> but we got the grab handles. Um, I actually have an, uh, an idea behind these, where the old grab handles used to be. I've got a cool idea for that. So that's why I decided to move the grab handles right here. But isn't that just a killer looking camper now? I so think so. Well, that is it for the body protection on this ultimate teardrop camper build. It's just turning out so awesome. <laughs> it's so awesome. Well, thanks guys for joining me on this adventure, uh, building this teardrop camper. <sighs> just, this is so awesome. Well, thanks guys. Next video, uh, it is going to be the trailer's painted and it's fully assembled. And then we're going to do some testing. And I've actually got it lined up where I have another camper exactly like this one that we're going to do a side-to-side -side comparison with. And that's going to be really cool. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. 
hit the notification bell so you cannot miss so you won't miss any episodes and uh pass this on to your friends let them check it out well until next time guys we'll see you guys out on the trail